Welcome to Rise to Lead, the podcast where heart-driven leaders come together to inspire and innovate. They will share actionable tips and insights that help you lead your team more successfully, advance your career or business as a leader, achieve greater impact, and experience deeper fulfillment. I'm your host, Regina Huber guiding you through deep conversations about leadership that's rooted in service, freedom, and the desire to leave a positive mark on the world. Welcome to the Rise to Lead podcast. I'm so thrilled to welcome a special friend, an exceptional professional today, Susan Davis. Susan is a leadership coach and an integrative health and performance coach. I'm going to read her bio to get it right. She has helped Olympic and professional athletes, served as a health, co as a health coach for the way to my heart and worked with corporate executives and entrepreneurs internationally and across the U.S. She has an extensive leadership background focusing on the implementation and evaluation of programs designed for effective communication related to quality of life and recreation for the Department of Defense. Her focus in his area has been on strengthening communication skills and leadership skills by incorporating proven stress reduction strategies. Susan is the author of Creating Life Balance, Strategies to Thrive. She is also co-author of Wartime Coping Strategies and contributing mm -hmm. author to Food for Thought. Susan has been a guest speaker for organizations such as Global Girls in Tech, a speaker for Bethune Cookman University and Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, as well as a backstage coach for, for Girl Starter. Her skill set places her above normal when, we, when it comes to helping others communicate effectively, which is key for successful leadership. <laughs> Her experience comes from years of leading and teaching leadership in the United States Army. Wow, Susan, I feel so blessed to have you with me today. So grateful that you're joining me. Thank you for having me, Regina. I'm excited to be here. Yes, and so I am too. And I know from my personal experience that you are heart-centered, Susan, because I have known you now for I don't know how many years now. 10 10 at least <laughs> right so there's no doubt about that you're absolutely heart centered and this show is all about bold and heart centered leadership and it's about freedom and i know you stand for freedom as well so again welcome to the show thank you thank you so in just a few sentences for those uh among our listeners listeners who do not know susan davis tell us who you are. Give us a little bit of a backstory. Well, I'm living in Port Orange, Florida, in the United States. Um, I did spend four years in Germany, so I love Germany. <clears throat> we traveled a lot in the military, so my experience comes from uh, reintegration, helping our soldiers return to their life after war, the Iraqi war and the Afghanistan war. So not only did I work with soldiers, but I also worked with their family members while they were deployed. And I worked a lot under crisis situations um, as we lost soldiers and how to deal with those tragedies. So I think um, I'm pretty well-rounded in helping people in daily life, but specifically leaders because of the position that I was put in at the time in the leadership position. Um, our last assignment, um, I was taking care of over 1,200 um, volunteers. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the head of the psychology department at Fort Carson, Colorado, invited me to come in through the back door, so to speak, to help our soldiers in the clinic doing these, these types of strategies and practices. Wow. Yeah, that is definitely not an easy job. And you are dealing with a lot of very serious situations there. So you definitely want to get it right. Yes, so we can actually help these people. Okay, 
So you already told us a little bit about how you served leaders in the past and how you have shown up as a leader uh, yourself in your life. And uh, tell us more now about how you serve other leaders and 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 other people uh, as a leader right now. Well, <clears throat> for my demographic, I just kind of put it out to the universe, God, our creator, to um, invite leaders to come to me to help them be better leaders. So I wrote the book with the demographic of entrepreneur in mind, because if we don't have entrepreneurs, then we're not really being progressive. Our entrepreneurs lead us forward. So that was my go-to uh, group to start with. Um, I worked a lot with the leadership within the military and each one of those leaders also led extensive, extensively within their own units. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's really important that our leaders come to realize that they've got to take care of themselves. That's kind of circling back as to what my book is about and how we can do that. Absolutely. And self-care is a part of self-leadership. I always say leadership starts with self. Self-leadership self is a fundament of any sustainably successful leadership. If we do not we, if we cannot lead ourselves, how would we lead others? First of all, that would be almost arrogant. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, we can only stay healthy if we need if we lead ourselves, if we are physically and emotionally healthy. So tell us more about that. Well, since you're focusing on heart centeredness, everything I'm about to share with you really helps your heart, um, your physical heart, your biology. So we're kind of going um, on a very basic platform today. Um, we can go further and deeper later on and maybe another session or a podcast. Okay. I would look forward to that. But let's just talk about the, the elephant in the room, stress, okay? So our, our leaders are not um, really addressing that, in my opinion, because they're, they're just trying to get through it. Everyone's trying to get through it and get to the next day and focus forward but sometimes you have to drop into the now moment. Mm -hmm. So do you know what the three deficiencies are that are associated with stress and all known disease? Tell us. Lack of water, lack of oxygen, and lack of magnesium. So, Prost. <laughs> prost. So we, <laughs> prost with the water. Yeah, yeah. If we start to recognize these simple things, then we can start to change our biology which gives us better focus, which helps us communicate more effectively, which helps us just enjoy what we're doing, our projects, our groups, our units, um, whatever it is that you're focusing on and growing and becoming better at. So let's just talk about water for a moment. Let's take yeah. the basic recipe for water, which is take your body weight in pounds, divide that number in half. That is the minimum amount of ounces of water that you need a day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that would be 100 ounces of water. So if, you, if you're if you living in a warmer climate and we're all, most of us are in the summertime at this moment, then you need to up your water. If you want to make your water even more effective, there's a couple things you can do. You can actually add structured water or living water to your water, which would be coconut water. Okay, you can also add lemon juice, which will alkalize your body. Most of our bodies are very acidic and that's what creates disease and imbalance. So more water. We have smartphones and if we would use a smartphone, we could actually program it to give us an alarm to drink more water, okay? So if you're not used to drinking water, uh, then that's a good way to start. Yeah. If you are drinking energy drinks, caffeine, alcohol, Okay, those things do not help us hydrate the body. In fact, they dehydrate us. It's like taking one step forward, three steps back. So I think there's a myth that people think you have to have caffeine or some type of energy drink um, to boost your energy. But in fact, you really need water. It's so interesting that you're saying that. First of all, I love my lemon water. I drink lemon water first thing in the morning, and then I have my caffeine too, <laughs> I have to admit. <laughs> I usually have two big mugs of coffee in the morning, and I love it, but I don't drink coffee during the day a lot, very exceptionally only. 
So yes, but I love this lemon water in the morning. Sometimes I also cut up ginger really thinly and I put it in there too. Is that a good idea? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that helps your gastrointestinal tract. So yeah, definitely. Turmeric also sometimes, sometimes yeah. both. And I actually yeah. enjoy then chewing on it. <laughs> Maybe not everybody does, but I do. <laughs> yeah. And it's good. yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, and isn't it also the case, though, that not everybody absorbs water in the right way? Because, for example, I studied uh, some holistic healing methodologies as well in the past, right? And um, in body talk, for example, we have a specific exercise that we can use to hydrate, to help our bodies hydrate better, right? Even if we drink a lot of water, sometimes we don't absorb it correctly. That's exactly also my experience because I had malaria and dengue fever in the past. And despite drinking lots of water all the time, I always felt thirsty during those times. So can you talk to that? Well, I'm not an expert in that area. However, it would just make sense that if your body was trying to recover, mm -hmm. that it would need more of, of the ability to for the cells to communicate. So your cells were mostly made of water. So if you're not giving yourself the liquid in the right proportions and your body is trying to overcome um, a bacteria or a parasite or something like that, then I believe that your body's telling, you have to listen to your body. Your body is a roadmap. So I would say that that would probably be what was going on there. I also am a proponent of uh, gas, um, castor oil packs on your abdomen. It's a very ancient remedy, but it works for a lot of things. Like if you wear it at night. I have been doing this because you told me. I've been doing this forever since you told me. <laughs> Like, I don't know how many days it's been. You said 30 days, but, uh, you know, I, I think I've only missed two nights uh, where I just forgot. But otherwise, I've been doing this. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I have castor oil for other purposes, too. I, I love castor oil. I love coconut oil. Uh, and uh, all, all these, you know, I, I use coconut oil for body hydration as well. Um, and uh, I, I just I just love it. It has so many different applications that we can use it for, right? And you also mentioned though magnesium. Tell us more about that. Um, so magnesium uh, is the first mineral to leave your body under stress, according to Norm Shealy, PhD, MD, neurosurgeon. He's my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and after 40 years of research, that's what he discovered. So if you understand that if you're under stress, then you are magnesium deficient. So even if you think you're taking magnesium as a supplement, like as in a capsule, you are not getting it quick enough. So I recommend like an Epsom salt bath <clears throat> daily. If you're really stressed twice a day, it doesn't have to be a full body bath. You can do just a foot soak for 20 minutes. That's what I do usually. Yeah. And it, you can multitask. I mean, we're all so busy. You can do that. Um, I would recommend that you wouldn't do it so that you could be in the now moment. However, if that's the only way you're going to get it done, then I would say definitely do it that way. And also, if you don't have the Epsom salts, um, you can do magnesium oil or magnesium lotion. Okay, great. So dancers know that, right? We dancers, we we love our Epsom salt baths for, for our feet. <laughs> And, yeah. you're, and you're a dancer too, Susan. You know that too as a dancer, right? Yeah, well, I'm getting ready for a two-hour rehearsal tonight, so. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've been dancing a lot this week too. I've been dancing like, what, uh, seven hours <laughs> this week? Good for you. Yeah. Two hours on Monday, two on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, one last night. So that's good. But yes, and and you know, especially after dancing all night socially, it was my thing. When I got home after that, uh, you know, now I don't do that so much, but when I used to do that more, my God, it's such a relief to have that Epsom salt bath for you, for your feet. And you also notice that it nurtures your body at the same time. Well, it'll it, help you go to sleep too. Exactly. Because it relaxes you. Right. So the, there's another deficiency that's going around everywhere is lack of sleep. Oh, yes. So if you're not sleeping, then your cognitive function is very declined. So mm -hmm. magnesium lotion, magnesium Epsom salt soaks, highly recommend that. Okay, great. Now, can you guide us through a specific exercise maybe that we can do to 
reduce our stress when we need it the most. Like, let's say we are really stressed out right now. We don't have Epsom salt nearby. Yes, we have some water, but <laughs> it's not enough. What else can we do? Well, there's a, a lot of things we can do, but I'll, I'll share one quick one right now. Okay. So take your hand and place it over your heart. Mm -hmm. So this is a heart-centered meditation. It's very short. You can close your eyes or you don't have to, but let's take a deep breath in and out. Feel the weight of your hand on your chest. Just begin to notice your breath and the weight on your chest. Automatically, this will calm you down. Deepen the breath. And using your imagination, imagine walking down a pathway. See the colors, hear the sounds, smell the fragrances. As you're walking down this pathway, you see a building before you. Go to it. Find the door. Open it. Step inside. Bring light into the room if there is no light. Now look for the bookcase. Go to the bookcase and take down the big book of worries and place it on the table. Open it up and one at a time, place all the worries and concerns that you have right now. It's as quick as a thought. Concerns about relationships, finance, career, health, Whatever it is, place it into the book now. When you're done, close it back up, put it back on the shelf and step back outside and begin walking back down the pathway and just notice any changes. Yes, definitely feels probably lighter for some people. Notice so this is, the, I work with a lot of CEOs and mm -hmm. this, this um, action by just placing your hand over your heart mm -hmm. is very nondescript. No one really notices. It looks like you're concentrating. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you're in a situation, maybe your heart rate's elevated, maybe you're worried about something, just take your hand and place it there. You can feel until you can feel it. You recognize you're feeling your hand. It will automatically drop you down into a more grounded position. Right. Nobody notices. It just looks yeah. like you're thinking. Right. It's very discreet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. These simple exercises are so precious. I love when it's simple because I always say simple is good because we actually do it. When it's too complex or complicated, we tend to not do it. Now, I really right. love this. Thank you so much for sharing this with me and our audience. So the other thing I would recommend is oxygen. Mm -hmm. You have an oximeter? Nope. Well, I, I like this because you can, if you're curious about your oxygen levels, you can take it yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not a hundred percent accurate, but it's pretty accurate. And it also takes your heart rate. So before I got on here today, I was like at 99% um, oxygen and my heart rate was at 49. So that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so I like it, but I think it's important for people to notice that you're not breathing. Most people hold their breath. Mm -hmm. If you just notice that, then you take a breath in and out and notice that you are not breathing. It's important that we get this oxygen into your body because remember the three deficiencies, not only associated with stress, but all known disease are lack of water, lack of oxygen and lack of magnesium. We have control over that. Yes, we just need to remember. I sometimes realize that I'm not breathing while I'm focusing too much in a dance class on a specific choreography. Mm -hmm. I love dancing, but choreographies are not my strong suit, <laughs> not my forte. <laughs> Yeah. depending also on the type of dance when the dance is more challenging you know it's it's also more challenging to remember you know, the specific movements that are more challenging it's it's it it can uh, require a bigger effort to remember the sequence right now in those moments i have found myself not breathing now because i tend to observe myself in those moments i realize it and i can correct it 
but it does happen very easily. Yeah. So yeah. And that's a good point about the movement because my whole background is energy medicine, transpersonal psychology, which means I'm referencing everyone at a frequency level. You have a frequency, I have a frequency, the table has a frequency. In order to elevate our frequency and stay in a high vibration, we must be doing these things. We must be drinking more water, taking in more oxygen, using magnesium and movement, which yeah. you and I kind of touched on briefly with the dancing part, but everyone needs to be moving to raise your vibration. When you have your vibration high for a period of time, then you're in a state of physical manifestation. So people always wonder, well, how can I get this goal accomplished with the things that we've just suggested? Okay, if you do these things, then you will raise your vibration. The more you do these things and lengthen that time of being in that high vibration, the more you're in the state of physical manifestation. And the less you're in a state of excessive stress. Yeah. Right. Because so, we I mean, all experience I mean, a little stress from time to time, and then it's part of being human. But what we want to avoid is the unhealthy type of stress. Correct. And I'm a coach for The Way to My Heart, which is um, designed for people um, who have PAD, peripheral artery disease, which peripheral artery disease, PAD, is rarely diagnosed before the first stroke. Wow. So you have cramping in the feet and the legs. So automatically, you're, uh, you, that is a key that you are magnesium deficient, but it could also be uh, clogged uh, blood vessels. Okay. It's and it, and it can happen at a very young age. So I'm just kind of at tagging that in there because a lot of people don't know about, about PAD. And that's why I'm involved in that group as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing that. Yes. And you're also the author of the book, Creating Life Balance Strategies to Thrive. And I'm all about helping heart centers and yes, heart centered and courageous leaders thrive. So I love that subtitle. I even created a framework called the Thriving Leader Formula. Uh, but back to your book, uh, just as a side, right? Because I, I, I really, I really love for leaders that are well intentioned to also be successful, because we need them to be there, especially in today's world and and more than ever. Right. So, but now, yes, back to your book, <laughs> Susan, yeah. creating life balance strategies to thrive. So I had the pleasure and honor to read the book as one of the first readers and uh, before it was even published. Right. Yes. So, yeah. Tell us more about the book. What can our listeners expect if they pick it up? Well, it, it's um, it's a trans transitional book, which means I start very cognitive at the very beginning. So you have a stress assessment a uh, document, a tool in there so you can see where stress is actually coming from, which sometimes we don't even think we know where it's all coming from. And so we can, you can look at it at this, through this uh, tool. Um, it was developed by Norm Shealy, PhD, MD, neurosurgeon. It's very comprehensive. So then as you figure out where your stressors lie, then uh, my suggestion is that you take the top three and start to eliminate those. So that's a cognitive approach through the beginning of this book. And then I work through the book. There's some stories in there on how I've helped other people through um, not just these basic stress reduction strategies, but also through um, quantum healing and energy medicine practices, which is based on cellular memory. Um, because yeah. a lot of times we don't know why we keep attracting the same scenarios, the same outcomes. And it's usually because of an unconscious program. So the key word there is unconscious. And most people don't understand that because we've been taught that we have to go and have cognitive therapy and get pharmaceuticals to fix the situation, which is rarely true. But I'm not going to poo-poo the whole thing because sometimes there are emergencies and I believe in emer emergency medicine. Yes, absolutely. Yes, Exactly. The key word is unconscious. And uh, we have all this programming in us or about us. And a lot of it makes not even any logical sense to our cognitive mind, to our conscious awareness, right? Because it's just right. so strange. Like I have also been working a lot um, in the area of digging up 
unconscious or subconscious beliefs and some of them sound so weird and so freaking I don't know out of this world right <laughs> that yeah. we would never think that we have them but a lot of them already come in our genes and that's uh that's what many people don't even know so we we sometimes need to work with an expert who knows how to get there and to help us in that way right Susan correct yeah we all need to reach out for help yeah we're yeah. supposed to be coming together as a collaborative population yes yes collaboration co-creation yes Love it. Mm -hmm. Susan where can people find you um, my website is susanperformance.com mm -hmm. you can contact me there or you can use my email susan at susanperformance.com and reach out. I would like to offer a 20 minute consultation to any of your viewers, if they're interested in knowing more or how I can help them. Mm -hmm. I would love that. Okay, we're going to put those links and your email in the description to this podcast as well, then. Great. Cool. Uh, I think you're also on LinkedIn. LinkedIn and Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. We, I'm going to put all the links that you have sent me. So no okay. worries about that. Okay. So anything else that you're promoting right now? I know you already offered this uh, free session very generously to get to know you better and, and more about the topic. Is there anything else you would like to add? I'm working on a project now with my, my business partner who's a functional medicine doctor. Um, it's called Wellness Fusion. Mm -hmm. So if you know of any nonprofits or organizations that are supporting veterans, that's what this uh, wealth fusion wellness fusion is going to be for so we're looking for that population i'm a, i'm about to send out the um the slides on that because i just finished it and it's going to be a very comprehensive three-month program oh i could think of a couple of people that might be interested in finding out more about that already so yes right. definitely uh we'll look into that myself as well and if there's anyone listening who has the that type of people in their in their networks please do reach out to susan as well any last words of wisdom or something that you absolutely must share that we haven't touched on yet maybe show us your book again well i say drink more water okay, okay. <laughs> always drink more water <laughs> because we our bodies depend on it okay and what's the first mineral that leaves your body under stress magnesium yes we have control over this yes absolutely and that's easy that's actually relatively easy to fix the magnesium yeah absolutely thank you so much susan this has been very enlightening it's always lovely to see you of course and i'm so happy and grateful that i can share you with my audience here today and of course i know that you're going to make it available to your audience as well so yeah hopefully we can do a future session in you know some point again where we can build on what we discussed today, what you shared with, with everybody today, or maybe talk about something completely different. I know you have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Well, see you then. And uh, everybody listening, I'll see you in the next episode. Stay tuned. More to come. Thank you for tuning in to Rise to Lead. Keep shining your light, standing up for what's right, and inspiring others to step into their brilliance. If you like this episode, please give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the Rise to Lead podcast on your preferred podcast app. Until next time, it's Regina Huber. And in the meantime, remember to Rise to Lead.